War and conflicts have always impacted men and women in different ways. But in all cases, women suffer the greatest harm while causing the least. The tensions was an example. Talking about tension now, time here. Yeah. I don't know any respect now. No respecting women, no respecting girls. No respecting home blow anyone. Me looking at my litans, okay that begin for all same sip without separate and get lost from who they are, what they believe. We heard rumors that there will be an uprising from the Kodokanao uh, people. And we, at that time, I could not believe what I was hearing. Women were raped in front of their husbands. Um, children shot in front of their parents. This is 16, 17 year old boys. In 1998, the Solomon Islands government designed and developed a national policy for women. But in this period, the ethnic tension erupted, increasing the rate and severity of violence against women and girls. Women and girls in villages and in Honiara suffered many personal traumas from outsiders and their own people, the most common being rape. Nobody really took notice of the weather coast until the crisis erupted. Everybody forgot there was the other side of Gora Canal. You know, everybody was thinking, oh, it was the front coast. Um, but I tell you, it's a beautiful part of the country. And what they went through, those people over there, is, is something they'll never recover from. Not in 50 years. Um, women were raped in front of their husbands. Um, children shot in front of their parents. This is 16, 17-year-old boys shot in the back. Um, and the trauma that they went through, I don't think they'll re ever recover from. I don't think this, the generation of our fathers and ourselves will ever forget that. Mothers told us the stories of their daughters who were raped and abused. So those, those were quite huge. But, you know, women who have run away from their home and their belonging and has really traumatized them. We do receive... Uh, sexual assault reports, but me fella cannot move on at that time because uh, fearing that those people with arms would retaliate to us if we assist those victims. They go inside law schools. Or they look at the girls' law schools. Some gun law, get a. I'm hard for say no. You know, things at law school, law home, because I got stop law home too. I'm not picking any long inside law school, I got stop law home too. Women same. Women got a thing him. Karem desire for keta. Something same. I got a say no. I spoke to one guy whose um, wife was dragged out from his house in front of him when he was there, and she was raped. Um, just because they suspected that uh, they weren't siding with one particular militant group, and it it's it's affected their marriage. I mean, rape rape is is always has a long-term effect. Me doing a lot of counseling for helping Mokata, for restoring back what wounds, yeah. Him only take love and compassion. But him really hurtful to master what affects lot this ethnic tension. Beyond that, him barava no good. There are lots of um, rape cases that have happened inside the tension, but him not reported because of uh, we ref we respect. Uh, victims wish and view in terms of uh, fear of Katagarim and that uh, retaliations for not exposing what happened in Loketa. We will have to because we will kind of look here for just look at perpetrators only or arrest or what, but we've also got to consider our victims the way Oketa live on and move on in life. I think it's more important for them. During the tensions, whole communities were brought out of homes and churches to witness the murder of men and boys. These experiences will stay with them for the rest of their lives. Me, 
take him service lo one for evening before like the women i mean one one for women program lo church me not speak at that time and then somebody him come inside with him gun he me say him tell him lo me you stop preaching tell him everyone go outside so me for go outside and not ask me for for go now watch him time him beat him man for die so something or say where me for or look him now we follow look him even time out the shooting people for die. We follow look him, witness him too. So he me big something to me. Some fella traumatized on that for a time. And hard for control. When for a time where me follow fight them really hard. There was this Kurokanal man who came to the market and uh, I think he was recognized by some people at the market as being one of those who were involved in the burning of houses up at, at the CDC up to Barande area. Uh, so they chased him. They chased him down the streets of Main Point Cruz and he ran down the Yacht Club Road and they caught him down there. And they pushed the Second World War uh, bayonet through his stomach. Uh, and they walked him up up the Yacht Club Road and up in front of ANZ. And they basically marched him like a parade. You had women, men, kids, young, old, all around him. And they, they had his hand up in the air. And they, they were, you know, yelling out, this one, one fella too, which meant this is one of them. And that really stuck in my mind because even as a journalist, I, I only saw that kind of vision in, uh, in, in foreign conflicts, yeah? And I never saw it, not in the Pacific, in, in that real, real form, yeah? And I remember standing on top of a vehicle, trying to look into the crowd and just seeing that the, the fear on this guy's face, yeah? Uh, I couldn't sleep for a few days. It, it really affected me and it stayed with me, that image, right throughout my career. Until now, I still keep it in my head. Many cultures in Solomon Islands recognize women as peacemakers. The breakdown of cultural norms during the tensions, however, meant that this role could be dangerous. This did not stop women from different backgrounds and island groups coming together to help other women in danger zones, as well as talking peace with militants from both sides. This is process of um, making peace. Me fala seleva on our side. Me fala no start him. Hemi start him here lo town. Women lo town. Say me thank him good for. What a karem hard for. Start for making peace. Long here, long town before I'm going to go to Mifal. Mifal is a little bit needy, somebody for cancel Mifal. Mifal is a little bit hard, Mifal find them hard for starting peace. A little because me, we were traumatized that time and no way for start off. The Women for Peace group was made up of women from all provinces, from all churches, from all walks of life. It was just a bunch of women coming together, praying together, and moving together, and, and speaking out to our leaders at that time. And we were moving in, sometimes in hundreds, sometimes in twenties and fifties. Women of, of all works of life, we come together. Church, the sisters of the church, as women in public ser service, providing and opening doors for where we can and giving the opportunity to these ordinary women in the street to say their bit to the Prime Minister. It's not only us who are talking, it's them who are talking. And I mean, I was amazed that, okay, we plan, okay, you will cover this subject, you will cover, but we don't tell them how to do it. But they have a knack and they have the, the ability and oh, to serve it to us how for doing. It was a mixed uh, response. From up. There were some who were, who responded quite well. There were some who were a bit upset with us. But we went on and did what we planned to do. Uh, because we were quite sensitive in the approach we took. And we knew that uh, you know, going further into the Konokana Plains would be done by Konokana women or meeting with IFM commanders and militants would be done by Konokana women while Malita women and met with uh, MEF commanders and um, MEF militants. But generally, you know, the mob, uh, the whole group of women, all province. 
our formal institutions failed. Our police could no longer protect us. Yeah, and there was that stagnant stalemate. Yeah, and when the fighting went to a stage where there was uncertainty, and then these women came. Yeah, women mobilized, and they took up that responsibility. Yeah, the big responsibility of going to the bankers, talking to the militants, to and from, putting their own lives at risk for the sake of peace. I think I want to use that as an example where this is the roles that women can contribute uh, if they can put their lives at risk to bring about for the sake of peace at the time when this country really desperately needed their help how much more can they contribute yeah at even at the national level yeah for for the sake of their country we did not look at leadership then we were all pushing for normalcy and peace but it was a greater opportunity at that time to look at leadership, but we did not. Um, we played a role more in peacemaking and peace building. Meeting back the time of tension and then today. I say, if I find them hard to move for starting back homes when we fall out. Build them homes, houses, uh, any man, look at them, sell them more paint pot, bedings, or something else. Yeah, today's in the time in Baratta, I, I, I should say that. Only a few of those tens, tension matters have already uh, sentenced, and those people are already serving jail blood and uh, prisons. So, yeah. I think this ethnic tension has affected everybody, even in the government level. The whole Solomon Island has affected. Every woman affected with all the pressures of life that you may go through. So many stress, so many worry. One of the biggest things that affected women and girls here was the, was the whole cultural breakdown in the society. Yeah? And that was so obvious in those days. Um, what we see now is a leftover of that. It started then. <laughs>